Good morning, dear students. Here we go again with the second part of congenital craniofacial anomalies. I'm Professor Amra Brook, Professor of Plastic and Maxillofacial Surgery. The intended learning outcomes to understand the embryology of the craniofacial region, understand cleft lip and palate pathogenesis and management, and enumerate other craniofacial anomalies. Here we talk about the cleft palate, which is lack of fusion of the palatal shelves. There is abnormalities in programmed cell death, which may contribute to a lack of palatal fusion. Or isolated disruption of the palatal shelf can occur after closure of the lip. Palatal closure is not completed until nine weeks post conception. The etiology for the cleft palate it genes controlled, controlled cell pattern and cell proliferation and extracellular communication differentiation. Clefting usually presents a genetically complex event. Single Mendelian disorders associated with clefting are rare. Two to 20 genes are thought to interact to result in facial clefting. Where we have the DLX gene direct the destination of the distal sclerogenetic mesenchyme elements to the palate, and mutations of these genes result in isolated palatal defects. Sonic hedgehog gene, it's a protein that mediates ectodermal functions and might regulate the outgrowth and fusion of the facial domains. Transforming growth factor alpha variant, it's a receptor legend, usually a rare variant, of transforming growth factor alpha. Family histories of cleft defects are common with the, this gene and additive teratogenic effect with agents such as cigarette smoking and alcohol may contribute as well with this gene. Transforming growth factor beta 3 gene expressed just prior to palatal fusion. It results in isolated cleft palate. IRF6 gene, it's identified an autosomal dominant Van der Wood syndrome. Also, we have got environmental agents, several agents that are associated with an increased frequency of mid face malformations. Medications like phenytoin, sodium valproate, methotrexate also may contribute. With corticosteroids, there is no evidence of an increased rate of malformations. Possible association could be excluded. Cigarette smoking. Noted that with mothers of children with facial clefting, both cleft lip and palate and cleft palate, teratogenesis has been attributed to hypoxia as well as a component of tobacco, cadmium. Alcohol associated with increased risk of fetal facial clefting. Alterations in cell membrane fluidity or reduced activity of specific enzymes such as superoxide dismutase. Folate deficiency, it may contribute to a range of birth defects. Evidence is emerging for a similar association with the development of cleft lip and palate. Prenatal diagnosis, diagnosed until the soft tissues of the fetal face can be clearly visualized sonographically from the 13th to the 14th week. The majority of infants with cleft lip also have palatal involvement. 85% of the bilateral cleft lips and 70% associated with cleft palate. Cleft palate with an intact lip comprises 27% of isolated cleft lip palate. The sensitivity is highest when it is associated with other structural anomalies. Isolated cleft lip is in low risk population. The sensitivity may be only 50%. Cleft palate with an intact lip is the most difficult orofacial malformation to diagnose prenatally detected on only 13 out of 195 cases in a one large series. Three-dimensional ultrasound 
can provide a clear image of the malformation. Here is a prenatal diagnosis by ultrasound showing a cleft lip. Syndromic or not, a thorough examination of the newborn or stillbirth is always warranted. Orofacial clefting is noted in over 300 syndromes. Three deserve additional commenting about the frequency, variable presentations, and modes of inheritance. We have got deletion of chromosome 22, where it's called the DJOS syndrome, the spectrum in addition to cleft palate. We have got conotruncal cardiac defects, thymic hypoplasia, and velopharyngeal webs. Majority of cases represent a new microdeletion. In families with conotruncal malformations and or cleft palate, further evaluation is appropriate. Orofacial Digital Syndrome Type 1 It's X-linked dominant syndrome. Manifestations in affected females are variable and subtle. Hyperplastic frenula, cleft tongue, cleft lip palate, and digital anomalies. Stretcher Collins Syndrome It's an autosomal dominant disorder. There is downward slanting of palpebral fissures, micrognathia, dysplastic ears, and deafness. Mental development is normal in these cases. The mutations appear to increase cell death in the prefusion neural folds. A family history with deafness, ear abnormalities, or cleft palate. Obstetrical management. Amniocentesis for karyotyping should be offered for high rate of chromosomal defects can be detected. Difficulty in prenatal sonographic diagnosis supports chromosomal evaluation. As for the year 2002, January, a neutral correction had been attempted only once in Mexico. The child delivered prematurely and died at two months of age. The risk it varies with the parent, the siblings, and parent siblings with different percentages as shown. Postnatal management. The care will entail attention not only to surgical repair, but also some immediate needs such as feeding. Primary lip repairs can often be undertaken at three months of age with palatal repair around six months. Additional surgeries as well as speech and orthodontic therapies are often needed. The Cleft Lip and Palate Association, it provides support and information for parents. Here's a photo that shows how we do a cleft lip repair. For feeding, infants with cleft lip and palate have few feeding problems. If the cleft involves the hard palate, the infant is usually not able to suck efficiently. Special nipples or alternate feeding positions. The infant should be held in a nearly sitting position during feeding. Prevents flowing to the back into the nose. Should be burped frequently about every three to four minutes. It's very important to keep the cleft clean. Breastfeeding is extremely challenging in these cases. Hyperman feeding activated by tongue and gum pressure. Milk cannot flow back, replenished continuously as the baby feeds, prevents the baby from being overwhelmed with milk. A gentle pumping action to the body of the nipple can do to increase the flow. Family care as well is important. We should have a ha family meeting with both parents and they should be both present. Infants should be brought to the parents as soon as the mother and the infant are in satisfactory condition. Allow the parents to observe, react and ask questions about the infant. Explain the defect and how the surgeon will most likely correct these defects. 
before and after pictures are often helpful. Emphasize as possible to the parents the normal healthy features of the baby. The baby should be present when the defect is explained as ugly as the cleft might be. Training the mother about feeding techniques and avoiding complications. Here's some examples of celebrities known to have cleft lip. Tom Brokoge, JC Jackson, Annie Lennox, Mark Hamill. For the surgical techniques, for cleft lip repair, in unilateral cases we do rotational advancement flap developed by Millard, where complications of this technique include dehiscence and infection thin right roll and excessive tension. In cleft lip repair bilateral cases, bilateral rotation advancement with the attachment to the premaxilla and mucosa, where for these cases the complications are dehiscence and thin white roll. Also these patients may suffer from velopharyngeal incompetence, where it's treated by superiorly based pharyngeal flap sphincter pharyngeoplasty by the palatoglossus, palatopharyngeus muscle, complications, continued velopharyngeal incompetence, and stenotic side pores. Alveolar bone grafting is essential as well. It's done by the iliac press bone graft, where I have complications like infected donor site, hematoma, failed graft, dehiscence, and palatal prosthesis. Meat facial advancement may be needed at an older age. We use Lefort osteotomies. We leave vascular pedicle attached in the back of the maxilla to prevent necrosis, but still we have got complications like malocclusion, infection, and necrosis. At a further older age, we have rhinoplasty, standard techniques we use to help to have tip projection alar rotation, columellar length, whereas for complications, it's alar stenosis. Conclusion of future directions, it needs multidisciplinary team, not merely a surgical problem. Alveolar bone grafting is needed. Pre-surgical nasoalveolar molding as well is needed. Pharyngeoplasty versus pharyngeal flap may be. And here's the case of complete cleft lip, pre-operative and post-operative.